Hello, welcome to CM Videos. My name is Dr. Michael Okreke. I'm making another video to show you how to model lattice composites. And the kind of result that you generate from this are this kind of result, which show you a compressive simulation and a shear simulation. And we are looking at this lattice composite as a full structure with the top and the bottom ends being modeled as metals. And then right in the center here, you find that those are the lattice structure. Also, the distinctive thing about this particular approach of modeling is that it's going to be using periodic boundary condition to apply the loading on the structure. So let's sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling. And the first thing I've got to say is that this video was requested by a user in my channel and basically this viewer Raj Nandini, I'm sorry if I didn't get that name right, and he said that first of all thank you for your wonderful video, I have some questions, I'm working with lattice structures, so the PPC which you have applied here will it be the same? For the lattice structure so that got me thinking and i decided to do this video just to demonstrate that even for a lattice composite you can as well even apply periodic boundary condition to it so the publication that we're going to work with is basically this again if you really want to see a more holistic video about this in three dimensions i've put in the cards here a video that i've made on the same lattice compost please do look at that and in that video i use also this reference publication okay so what are lattice composites so these are basically a kind of engineered materials with a periodic cell structure. The periodic cells are made of struts with different orientations. So typically what you have will be a face sheet on the top and the bottom and right in the center of it, you get this lattice structure. The modeling approach that we're going to be using for this would be either you go a full structural approach where you model the full range of, of the structure or maybe you take a representative volume element like we see in this case which is a unit cell and based on that unit cell you can then go ahead and do your modeling so we'll be using this kind of unit cell approach however unit cell will be a much bigger unit cell for our kind of analysis the virtual domain that we're going to be working with will be a virtual domain that looks like this body center cubic structure will be what we are working with and on the two, top and bottom you've got the aluminium face sheet this is a representation of a 2D body centered cubic structure with a length and a height of 5 millimeter and 5 millimeter. The strut dimension is really important for us to bear in mind. So we're looking at a strut with a typical diameter of 0.5 millimeters. However, because we're modeling it as a 2D, it will just be a planar structure. And the dimensions, the orientations of those struts are all specified here. The next thing that I need you to be aware of is the material that we're going to be modeling. I did say that right in the center, we've got this plastic material which is made of ABS and the properties are given here. The aluminium also we use for the back shapes. Now the distinctive thing I want to show with this video is the idea that you can actually use periodic boundary condition for your simulation and this is allied to the question that the viewer asked. So how can I use periodic boundary condition even for my period for my lattice cell? Of course you could easily do that. So this is a design we're going to work with. So what we want to do is apply periodic boundary condition all the way around in this domain. Whether you're deciding to model a small subsection of this structure or the full structure like we're dealing here, you can always use periodic boundary condition. You could also define how you're going to apply your loading. So I'm going to use the four corner nodes to define how I'm going to apply the loading on the domain, but especially these three corner nodes. Also, in this case, this presentation shows you what's happening if you're going to be applying a compressive load on this domain. So that's what we, we are going to be doing. The other thing I needed to say here is that since there is no commercially available way of applying periodic boundary condition for this video, I'm going to be using a software that I developed called PBC 2D Gen which again the link of how you can get hold of this software is in the description of this video please do find out and i will also put in the uh, uh, there are videos in in the cards which can help you as to how to work with the pbd to the gen so please do get hold of this software and try and use it to see how it can help you so the final thing that i want to say is the two type of loading that we'll be looking at in this video so the first of them will be a uniaxial compression test which basically you've got the domain and you apply a load at the top remember we're applying periodic boundary condition on this domain and then the second of them would be a shear test however i'm going to use a pure shear test the yx pure shear test so next thing we're going to do is to jump into abacus and begin to do this modeling Okay, here we are in Abacus. So first thing is that we are going to create a strut and it's a 2D system. So if you click here, so this will be my strut. I'm going to make it a 2D system. It's going to be deformable shell and all that. 
So we're going to create this. Remember, it's going to be 0.5 millimeter in diameter. So I would go in here and put minus 4 and 0, minus 0 0.25, and then 4 and 0 0.25. So that defines the length, the strut that I'm going to work with. But clearly, I don't want it in this angle. I need to rotate it. So we're going to use this button that says, okay, I want to rotate it by creating a copy. So I select all of that. And where will I start rotating? About the center and 45 degrees. So we have that. All right. So we need to do the same with the other bit. So I select. Okay. This time around, I want to move it. So you select that. Press down, shift, make sure you select the other end and click OK. Select the center which is the center of rotation and this time around it's minus 45 so now we have a design of our structure so we can't get a solution without taking so what we need to do in the center here is to delete all the intersecting points so we've got a clean structure okay and then done so now this is the design of our lattice cell structure you know with this body centered arrangement so what we want to do is to cut this down to the dimension that we want which is something that has a length a base of five and a height of five so what are we going to do so basically all right so i click on this so and minus 2.5 minus 2.5 will be the bottom corner here and then the top corner here will be 2.5 and 2.5 so that is the RV of the system that we want. And then we'll just put something bigger on top and done. So this trims off the domain, giving us a really nice representative volume element of a unit cell, one unit cell. But remember, in this case, we are trying to do it with a multiple unit cell. So we need to go into the assembly module and within the assembly, create instances of this domain we want. So this is the first instance. Now I need to do a linear patterning of this instance. So I'll select that. And then, okay, so we're getting an idea here. So why not let's do four on that axis and four on the vertical axis. So that gives us the nice representative element. So what I'm going to do is to make all of them. So I select all of them and say, okay, this is my lattice cell. All right, so I'm going to remove, remove all the intersections so that I've got a clean structure in mind. And then continue and then select everything. So that gives us a nice lattice cell structure. Now, the next thing we need to do is to go back to part and create the aluminum face sheet. So we're going to still make it 2D. It's going to be deformable. It's still going to be a shell. So now I'm going to put some numbers here. So this will be minus 1 and 0 on this corner axis, and then 21 and minus 1. So that is the face sheet that we're working with according to the dimensions we need it so we'll go back to the instance and now bring in the face sheet okay so this is fine the face sheet is where it should be so what i'm going to do is to kind of arrange move these things into place so if i select that select the instance that i want and i want to move it from this corner point to the origin which is 000, 000 in the structure so now this gives us really the nice structure that we're looking for the bottom one so we need to pattern the lower one to get the top one okay so if we take this out so we need the spacing to be 21 so because this is of a height 20 and then the extra one you know millimeter distance for for the facing sheets so so we've got the full structure that we're looking for and everything looks all right the final thing i'm going to do is to make all that into a lattice cell structure so let's call it an lcs okay so we return the intersection and then we'll connect everything together so we have a full structure. So remember in practice, this top and bottom will be bonded to the structure. So we've got the structure. Now the next thing we need to think about here is the material. So the ABS structure that we want would have an elastic property of 0 0.862 e to the power 9 and 0 0.35. And then it's got a plasticity of 33.33 e to the power six and 0, 0.0 so that's for the abs so what for the aluminium so let's just call it alum and it would have an elastic property of 70 gigapascal e to power 9 and 0 0.33 so we can work with that and then we could allow it for some plasticity so 250 e to power 6 and 0, 0.0 so that's the aluminium and then we can get the sections done so alu section so we could call that the aluminium section. We select that and then 
the ABS section. So we'll do that as well. So we've got the ABS. All right. So we can then go ahead at the top end here. We've got the LCS structure. So we need to do a section assignment. So I'll select in the middle, deselect that. And then basically this will be my ABS section. And then I'll select the top, hold down shift, select the bottom. So that will be my aluminum section as well. So I could then check if everything is fine. So the materials are okay. Then we can then mesh the domain. So we we'll select all that. So mesh, okay, it's recommending that, but I want to use something really small, 0 0.2. So this is fine. And then we we'll select this. So I'm going to use a quadrilateral shape and allow for media axis um, method. So, and then in the end, so we've got sort of a nice uh, problem. So this is okay, this is a good mesh and we can work with that. The other thing that we need to do is to introduce some kind of um, reference nodes to this domain. So if we switch back to the assembly mode, so we could look at sets. So I'm going to call this my reference nodes. So we need this reference node, and then you could select all four of them, press down, shift, and select all the corner nodes accordingly. So this will be what we are going to use to extract stress strain data like we normally do with periodic boundary conditions. The other thing we need to do is to, okay, so can we select a few things? So let's say X back set, S back. So I could select that and select this. So this is fine. And then Y base set, okay. So I could select this and select that. Then the next thing we now need to think about here is the step. So I'm going to call this a loading step. So this is fine. We can create a history output. So reference notes history output. So this is what we are going to use to generate stress train data in the end. So we're working with the set here and then the reference node. So the values that we normally would work will be, will be RF1 and coordinate 2. So these are the typical numbers that we use. Again, if you're finding value in the things that I'm sharing, please do uh, smash the like button so that YouTube will continue to spread this message. So the next thing is the boundary condition. So we double click on there. So, so we're going to fix the X back. So if we continue, so my X back is what I need. I highlight that and I'm going to fix it in the one direction. So the next thing we have here will be, so again, Y base is what we need and then we fix it in the Y direction. So we've got this case and then the next, the last thing we need to include is the load. It's going to be associated with the loading step and I'm going to apply it right at this point. It's going to be a compressive load. So let's make it a compressive load of let's say maybe 10, you know, 50% displacement in the Y direction. And we're going to make it a minus so that we have a proper deformation in the Y direction. So this is what we have. So I'll just rename the model at the top. So that's the Y compressive case. Um, so I'm going to copy this model and instead of working with that, so this will be Y. So we're going to do a pure shear case. So what would that mean? So I'll go back here and take away all the boundary conditions we want. Now my loading would be twofold. I will rename this load. So the first load will be an X axis acting load. So if we open that, so it will still be on that point, but it will not be in that direction. It will be in the one direction. So that's one of the loading that applies a shear stress, but because we are applying pure shear, so we need also a Y load, okay? And it will be acting right at this point, and that will give us a Y acting load of, let's say, 10 as well. So we've got those two loading acting, but then we need to constrain the system appropriately. Call that fixed origin. So it's going to be fixed in the X and Y direction. So I'll select that point. So it's going to be fixed in the X and Y direction. Y top fixed. So that's Y top. So I'll select that point and I'm fixing it in the Y direction, which is the two direction. So as allowed. And then the other one is X front fixed. So we go to the X front, so that case, and I'm fixing it in the one direction. All right, so we've got the system rolling in the X direction at the top, and on the other end, we've got it moving up in the Y direction, and this end is fixed. So this creates a pure shear simulation. So we've got those two cases, then we'll go to our job, so, the, so we'll continue. Okay, so we've got the first load, so we'll create the second case, which will be Okay, so we've got the shear case set up. So now we've created those two jobs. Clearly, what we want to do is to apply periodic boundary condition to this. And we're going to use our PBC gen. 
So a PPC gen would normally be a release like this. So you will have a folder with the PPC gen loading load on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that link, then go back to Abacus and make that location where PPC gen exists my present working directory. So I'll do this file set working directory and put it there. Right. So now we have met that location where PPC gen is our pr present working directory so that I can then go in here and right click and say, write the input file for that. Right click on this, write the input file for that. So we've got those two cases, all input files written. Now we can go back to where PPC gen exists. So those input files that we've written now appear right in the folder where PPC gen exists. So we can then apply periodic boundary condition on them by simply calling that function PBC gen 2d so we'll type it in and then it will come up saying okay which one are we looking to use so clearly what we want is the first case so we'll select that so what it will do is i will trade through the domain and apply periodic boundary conditions so there are two files that you generate from this case this first file is a file that shows all the nodal points on the model and then the second file here shows you the boundary nodes that it will apply periodic boundary conditions on okay the ones and then the corner, corner nodes as well all right so we've got that information done for the first case so we'll do the same for the second model which is the pure shear case so it will go through the same process however this time around is enforcing uh, periodic boundary condition on the shear case model so we we'll finish with those two and if you notice right here you'll find that there are two job folders that are created so if we open the first one so you've got that model there so what we're going to do is run right within this environment abacus okay so that's the file name and then you put interactive because this is to help you visualize what is happening in the model so the model starts running and then it's running through and creating the normal abacus model files that you always get here okay so this is the end of the model so what we're going to do is if we go back to the home and then we'll navigate back then go on to the next case to set the job running. Okay, so this is the end of the simulation for the pure shear case situation. So I'm going to now move away from MATLAB and then visualize my result in Abacus. Okay, so this is a result from the compressive case. And what we see here is right away, the domain is coming down under this compressive load and the stress histories are all there. So in the end, what we notice is that there is this buckling effect of all the domain as and at the connectivities there's the yielding effect on the domain there's not much a lot of loading on the aluminum um, backing sheets but this is really the information what we need because as this system starts deforming and building plastic load in them there's a load absorption due to this design and so this is really what we want and with periodic boundary condition on this domain we are recreating the kind of result that we will be interested in, you know, if we have applied it a different kind of loading. There's a lot of symmetry in the results, so there's no, so everything works nicely. Okay, so this is the second case, which is the shear case. And remember, we're working with a pure shear case situation. So that means it's being shared up here and also being shared in this other direction. So we have a really nice shared deformation in the domain and everything looks looks as we'd expect it to be. So again, we've used periodic boundary condition and you can see what's happening across the different domain as the simulation is building up. So two nice simulations of a big structure, or lattice cell structure undergoing deformation in shear and in compression and we get some nice results. So the, only, the, the, the other thing that we could do with this is can we just visualize what sort of result we are going to get of course we can so if you go here and say okay in my history output so we we'll select that and then you press down control and you select this as well so basically all the numbers that we will normally do and then you plot that so you could see the nice deformation so we get that as our compressive behavior so we can take that into an excel file and plot it and visualize that again if you are really interested in how you can use this i've put a video in the card here of how i've demonstrated how you can take this kind of result and generate the actual stress and strain data that you need but we'll not be doing that in this video okay so when we put the two together so you can also see the result that we're generating here showing the compressive case and the shear stress case so if you're interested in understanding how lattice cell composite can be also modeled in three dimension not in two dimension in the case that we've shown here there is a video that i've put here that can show you a little bit more about this thank you for your interest in this channel and i'll see you in the next video bye bye